So in this final flowchart and video on population ecology, we're going to be sort of summarizing the concepts that we've mentioned by finally looking at some direct factors that influence our population size. Before we've looked at the study of the population size growth, we looked at the idea of population size and how it affects itself in life history traits, and we've also looked at the idea of logistical and exponential growth all surrounding the population size um, theme of this lecture. Now we're going to conclude this lecture by looking at what I would consider factors influencing population size. And that's what we entitled the last flowchart. Factors influencing population size. These are things that population ecologists have classified and grouped into two main categories of factors, two main baskets of factors that influence population size. They are the following. The first group of factors are called density independent factors. These are factors that do not rely on the density of the population. Density independent independent, let me rewrite that. Density independent factors, uh, otherwise known as DIF. These density independent factors are simply going to be defined as environmental factors. So again, non-living component of the environment, right? Environmental factors that operate without relation, that operate without, that's our key word here, without relation to population density. So we remember we define population density as the amount of uh, organisms living in a per unit, let's say, area or volume, and that's our population density. But right now we're basically looking at factors that are without population density, that don't care about population density. Those factors are usually going to be what we term abiotic. They usually are non-living factors that don't care about whether or not there's a high density or low density or no density. They're usually abiotic. Abiotic meaning without life. And these abiotic elements, we would call them usually abiotic elements, so let me rewrite that. Usually abiotic elements. These are going to be uh, usually, uh, like I said, of the non-living world. And again, ecology is about living and non-living. Here's another direct example. Um, basic population independent density factors, let's say, are going to be things like, uh, let's say, imagine a volcanic eruption. Uh, if an, a volcano erupts, it does not care whether there are 10 trees or 100 trees within a population of trees. It will take down however many trees are there. That eruption is independent of density. Something like a pond drying up is another good example of a population uh, density independent factor in factors that influence population size. If you have a pond that dries up, that dried up pond will not care about the density of the fish within that population. All that's going to happen is that the population size will, inf will definitely in decrease because of the lack of water and the, thus the, the death of the fish. So that's an independent factor. Doesn't care what is living, what's not living. These are abiotic elements. In addition, what we can state about d density independent factors is that the birth rate or death rate, let's say, these factors uh, act on things in which the birth rate or the death rate, so two things that we looked at quite intensively, um, don't change. They don't change with population density. Um, this is a key idea here that this is independent of density and if you're independent of density that means the birth rates and the death rates that happen within this density independent factor are not going to care whether or not there is a high density or a low density. So that simply means that the size, the population size, aka the birth rate and the death rate, two major factors of population size are not going to care whether or not there's a high or low density. These density independent factors to conclude are associated with usually R selection. So those species that in are uh, the R selected side of the extreme of life histories, let's say. So these are our DIFs, our density independent factors. They don't care what the density is. The ones that I would believe that 
population ecologists are a bit more interested in are those that do care about density. These are called density dependent factors, things that are dependent upon density. These factors are definitely going to involve the density of the population. We can state that these are environmental factors, just like before these were environmental factors, that directly affect population density. That affect pop density. So I'll just call that pop den for population density since we're going to be saying that a lot. So environmental factors that affect pop den. This can be further classified as changes in population density or changes in pop den. Changes in pop den. Of course there are going to be changes in this situation because we are influencing population size. Thus we are influencing, influencing population density because we are dependent on population density. It makes sense. Changes in pop den alters um, this is what's going to have the alterations that factor affect. So the factor that's acting is going to be altered by changes in population density um, on the population. Effect on population. So let me reread this. Changes in population density uh, alters factor. The factor that we'll talk about is a little bit later. Effect on population because they're directly related to each other. What do I mean by this? Well, what we can understand is that, let's say, these are usually going to be biotic factors. Remember how I put factors in quotes here? Well, let's look at these biotic factors. Things like, let's say, competition, specifically competition for resources. You should already be thinking what type of species or selection that this DDF, these DDFs, are going to be acting on. If there's competition, that would mean that you would have what we call intraspecific competition, competition between, uh, within species. If we have a lot of density, we're going to have lots of competition. The change in population density, lots of it, is going to alter the competition, that's the factor, and its effect on the population, more competition. Very simple uh, concept of and flow of ideas through this uh, statement right over here. Another factor that we can think of is disease, and you can apply this simply to just like how I did to this idea of changes as well. Things like predation. All of these things are living factors, living things that directly affect life itself. Um, even wastes. When we have waste accumulation specifically, that's going to directly affect the base that are, is going to be directly affected uh, upon the density that we see within the population, and also parasites. Parasites. Um, though can be classified also as part of the disease concept, they're going to be a little bit different because parasites will be more effective if there's a greater amount of density. If there's a greater density, there's a greater amount and ease of transferring as a parasite to a different organism and continuing your, your life. So this is definitely dependent on density. Um, another idea we have to understand about density dependent factors is, is that it follows a negative feedback system. It's a very simple system. This is the first time we're mentioning a negative feedback system, but you probably already understand what a negative feedback system is because it's quite intuitive, the definition. So what I mean by this, and I've been alluding to it with my examples, is that let's say um, population density increases. So I'll say as pop den for population density increases, we're going to have a negative feedback system. So dot, dot, dot. What's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is that the density dependent factors, the DDF, will slow population growth. So you have an increase in population, then you are going to have the DDFs try to decrease population by acting on that increase. Thus you will have, let's say, decreased birth rate. That's one goal of this DDF for right now. Um, another goal would be increased death rate. Both of these things are negatively in, uh, uh, fit in this negative feedback system based off of this initial increase. Because there's an initial increase, you want these density dependent factors to rely on the density to decrease the population. That's an increase, then a decrease. That's a negative feedback system. We can easily look at the opposite version of that by saying as pop den decreases, as pop den decreases, dot, 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 
what's going to happen? How are the DDFs going to respond? The DDFs will actually act in a way that's going to increase the population growth. So the DDFs, instead of slowing population growth or decreasing population growth, DDFs will increase pop growth. How will they do that? Well, they will affect the two most important things in population ecology. They will increase the birth rate and if they increase the birth rate to increase population growth, that means they're probably also going to um, and or decrease the death rate. And finally, last point on the density dependent factors, you've probably already guessed this. This usually um, is uh, a mechanism and factors that involves a population that tends to uh, maintain itself at that K. And remember, K was carrying capacity. Population tends to maintain at K because of these density-dependent factors, whereas the density-independent factors are quite uh, obviously associated with our selection. Final point about these factors is the following. Just like I said previously, I gave you two extremes. We have to make sure we understand that that's not reality. Reality is quite uh, much more complex in the sense that the density independent factors plus the density dependent factors both act together. There's a distinct combination of both of these in order to regulate population size, regulates pop size. And what was our topic for this flowchart? Factors influencing population size. What is the answer? Well, density independent factors and density dependent factors, as indicated right here, combine themselves to regulate population size based on the current environmental conditions. So overall, hopefully through this lecture, you've gained an understanding and an appreciation that population ecology, though focuses on the species and the living organism, we also have to focus on the non-living component. And that's the power of population ecology. That non-living component drives our living component because we see very fancy equations and derivatives and calculus and differential calculus expand upon this idea of growth and logistical and exponential. And all these factors combine together to give us this very broad idea of population ecology that can be broken down into its sort of simple components as we did through these flowcharts. And hopefully you understand that it's definitely a combination of living and non-living through these mechanisms that we studied.